Major support for these broadcasts is provided by Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting, Capital One Bank, Genova Burns, Gian Tomasi and Webster, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, MNT Bank. Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, Cassidy Turley, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Corman Communities, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, The Wickhoff Group, Urban American, and These Friends. And the leasing market is questionable. I mean, there's an election, there's other things, the stock market's up and down, T-bills have increased by 40 basis points. So, you know, how do we see the office market moving these days? So I've brought together today an interesting group. I've brought together a banker who's also looking for space, two prominent brokers, and an owner to provide their insight on how they see the state of the office market. My guests, they include Gino Martocci, who's the president for New York City and Long Island for M&T Bank. Mark Boissy, who is the chairman for the Tri-State Region of Cassidy Turley. Joe Harbert, who is the president for the Tri-State Region, Eastern Region for um, Collier's Intervention. Okay. And last but not least, Winston Fisher, at least we have some owner over here, and a major owner, uh, a principal at Fisher Brothers. So since you, you know, you have to deal with these people. I mean, and they're nice people, uh, with the exception of Boise, who has been playing too much golf because these his son. These people. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's a good start to this. No, 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 no. Friends, no, 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 no. Michael, you called me a broker. Yeah, no, I, I call you a broker, but that's because you're all friends of mine, so I can joke about this. You lost control of the show, already. Okay, I didn't lose. <laughs> so, so here's the question: How do you, as as an owner, see? This summer, and how do you how how do you see the beginning of the year, and how do you see the balance of the year in the office market? And, and the office market today is quiet. It's slow. I mean, the area Midtown is you're seeing financial service firms are are quiet. Um, uh, professional services are quiet. It's there's the uncertainty. I mean, as I think you it, that we're probably all going to say it's the uncertainty of the debt crisis, the fiscal cliff, you know, the elections, Europe, and it's just created a stagnation. Going forward, how do things get resolved? Um, I think that they're going to be resolved positively. Um, probably some pain, but it's not going to be catastrophic. Well, we, have, we have a double thing going forward. We have a, the, the major pre presidential election this year, and next year we have a mayoral. So, you know, you know, sometimes you can say we have the presidential election and it's over. But we have a major change because we really, you know, Mike Bloomberg has been a good businessman, has been an excellent yeah. mayor, and now you have a situation that you have some very good candidates. And as you know, I don't talk any political thing on my show, but we have uncertainty, which will maybe make this take a little longer. You know, you've had a good year in many, I mean, the Avon deal and some other Random House, you know, your organization, Cody, on, some, Cody on, on the situation of the Empire State mm -hmm. Building. 
with these, you know, how many people, and we've said this before, there are a lot of lease renewals. People are renewing. How many well, there people? Ha there have been. There's been huge lease renewals in the last. I mean, couple Viacom, one point six million. Viacom. Morgan Stanley, one point two million square feet. Citibank, yeah. most recently, and uh, that's been a lot of our activity uh, in terms of new new transactions for growth of space. Those aren't happening, and especially in Midtown. Midtown has really suffered because of the financial service sector has really come to a halt in, in some respects in terms of their growth expectations and their uncertainties. Yeah. I tell you what, if I was a tenant, I'd love to be a tenant in this marketplace. There are opportunities in Midtown that um, you can avail yourself of. I wouldn't say that about some other markets in the city, Midtown let's, South. So let's, let's talk yeah. about, uh, Joe and Mark, since you guys see that pace exactly in the Midtown, mm. what are the opportunities for a tenant today in Midtown? What type of deals can they get? I think the prices are really very low. If you go back to the high point of our market several years back, we are way, way down compared to where we were. We're not looking at $92 average rents. We're looking at 60s and 70s with $60 in work, and concessions are creeping back up the last two or three months. If you've been a tenant out there and you've been looking for four or five, six months, owners are sitting down saying, you know, the market's a little slower. I'm going to close out that deal. Let's get those guys in a room, and let's close it out. And you're getting a couple more dollars, a couple more months. I mean, I see the market as sort of taking a little bit of a breather now. You know, we came back from some really awful, awful times in 2009 and 2010. We recovered pretty dramatically from that. Maybe we, re we recovered maybe 70, 75 percent of sort of uh, pricing. So we're taking a breather because of the uncertainty of the economics and government, et cetera. But um, so tenants today, I mean, Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan has put space on the market. Society General, who just did a big lease on Park Avenue, has put space on the market. Um, McGraw Hill has just put 200,000 feet on the market. I mean, Nomura, who moved from downtown, from 900,000 feet downtown to Midtown, has put 200,000 feet of the 900,000 feet they just took Midtown on the marketplace. So the opportunities I see are really in the sublease market. Now, uh, I remember I, maybe a year ago we were talking, you were on the show, and we were talking about some top-notch Park Avenue buildings, not as good as 299 Park, no. especially since we have the owner of 299 or Park. Park Avenue the, Plaza. Oh, or Park, Park Avenue yeah, Plaza. Come on, let's No, no, so we, you know, we have that. But we were talking some buildings, as we would say, in the J.P. Morgan uh, campus over there, that you were talking that on a sublease you were able to get rents like $75, $80. Less now. Less. Less. Yeah. Well... Yes, they have space on the, and J.P. Morgan has gone through a significant sublease program at 277 Park, and they've sublet maybe 500,000 feet of their 1.3 million feet there um, over the last three or four years, and a lot of it during the very, you know, horrible financial crisis we went through. They have a few floors left over, and there's a mandate to unload them. Mm -hmm. So there is some opportunity there, and I know you've probably seen a lot of different things. Now, now Gino, you're, you have a double side today, okay? You have a side as a company who, you know, you, you took over Wilmington Trust, you want to consolidate your, your operation all under one roof, you, and you were looking for space, and you also look at it because you're a guy who lends to people who are buying buildings. So, as a, let, so let's ask you the question on two ways. Tenant. Let's talk about, you've been looking, I know, for at least the last year, you've been negotiating. How has the market changed with regard to you looking and consolidating space in different opportunities? And then we're going to ask you with regard to the banking position of how you look at buildings and situations. Well, if you go back to late last year or the spring, I think, uh, and, and certainly even a year ago, uh, before the summer last year, so... January, February, March, April of, of 2011, and then again in the spring of uh, 2012, I think the landlords are feeling very good about their space. I'm speaking as a tenant now. And they were probably less willing to um, negotiate too much on asking rents, too much. And the, the, the uh, packages uh, that they were providing were probably somewhere, 20, in my opinion, 20, 25 percent um, different from where we were sort of ending up. So right you're, you're seeing a 20 to 25 percent difference in the pricing structure as you were, as opposed to last no, year. No, no, in TI and in, 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 in the, the, the packages they're providing outside of a face rent. Face rent still is, is, is depending on the building that you're in and where in the building you are. A base building is different than than the, than the upper four spaces. Is is they're trying to hold their face rents as much as they can. 
the sublet space is where the opportunity is, and, mm -hmm. and okay. that's what's changed, and that's what's pressured the landlords on the directors. So, from what you know, I'm you I mean, have, is that fair? I mean, yeah, I mean, ex I mean, we're seeing it in our buildings. We have a lot of tenants who are, or not a lot, we have a few tenants who are looking to sublease. As a landlord, that's actually opportunity for us because if you know they have six years left on their lease, they're willing to take a hit up front. We can then find a great tenant. They're going to front load all the costs. They'll pay the high TIs, and then we can actually bump up the rent to what it, what we think will be a market rate, and we have no out of pocket. Out of pocket, our net effective is pretty good. So it's actually good for all parties concerned because we don't have, you know. But you're seeing it out there. It's there's a lot of space on the market. I mean, the subway space. But that's. Is but it's down. still only 17 percent of the availability. And it hasn't it's, changed and, dramatically. And, and it's. Yeah, but it's up. enough. It's been enough to pressure the landlords on the direct rents. Well, yeah, he's the a, you feel the pressure? We don't have space. Then you have so, to, I mean, that, that's, story, yeah. I, I have to tell you, though, would you want to have a big block of space today? No. I think that if, you would And need, it's a midtown phenomenon. That's right. It's a mid, it class is a, a good phenomenon. Time. Exactly. Midtown class right. A. Midtown if you class looked a. at the amount of 100,000 square foot blocks of space there were, like, last year, I think, what was it, like, 35 or yeah. something like that, this year, it's like 45 or 50. So... And that's well, last year to a large a degree because of You've got to remember that with 38 million square feet leased last year, it's a much different year. Yeah. It's more of an average year. It's a 24, 25, 26 million it square feet year. Listen, we own a building on 3rd Avenue. I think it's probably the best value in New York City. I mean, it's, it's like cool. 605 3rd Avenue. And we don't have, we have a little space coming up. The rent you have 60,000 feet for me? <laughs> <laughs> we could find it, though. Um, you can broker the deal, Mike. Uh, <laughs> it would be the first show when you really <laughs> broke your money. Deal. And that, that market's as quiet as can be. Park Avenue, Sixth Avenue. There's there's activity, but it's at depressed rents it's, today. It's retraction retraction of the of the law firms and the financial services industry. That's really law firms what it are comes very quiet down. this year. Law firms and are very quiet now. Midtown South, as we've talked about before, it's booming. Yeah. And 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 I think it shows the vibrancy of New York and the, really the future of New York. There will always be a strong financial services industry in New York. But uh, but you know without. That's funny. There has services. to be the case. What about, but, but you also what about have professional technology. services? You know, we talk that professional services, legal services are a little quiet. Accounting firms are, you know, they, there's more hoteling. There's other situations. And, you know, let's be realistic. Law firms are consolidating smaller space, better efficiency, you know, more uh, one secretary to uh, handle more partners. I mean, that's happening over there. So it's, uh, there's an efficiency level, right? Workplace Business. strategy dictates these days that you try to shrink the square footage per person, and it's pretty dramatic for some firms. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. I mean, you're going from, you know, we, we, I think we had 320 or 340 per square foot per person. You know, we're, we're sort of building to, we're taking more space, but we're, we're building to 250, 260. Yeah. yeah. I mean, which is, like, which is more than some, but, you know. Yeah. But, but uh, New York's not going in. I mean, let's no, not. No, no, I, no, I mean, no, 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 no. I, I don't believe. I mean, look, we're, 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 this is, the, 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 you know, the, the, the exactly. we don't have a, it's a healthy market. We don't have a, a, we don't have a, a crisis. Market. We don't have a crisis it's, in New York City on the market vacancy. whatsoever. Yeah. The vacancy yeah. rate is still pretty low, and yeah. when employment picks up, watch out. Watch out, exactly. Watch out because I the prices are going to come When employment picks up, let's. 2015. I wouldn't want to be in the market. No, that's as what I want to do with as no, a tenant. Sure as a tenant, no, it's it's true. Anybody sick in 2015? Don't I have? Space in the World Financial Center, World downtown. Trade Center downtown. Somebody downtown. said those I are mean, different downtown. markets. You said it yourself. Those are also, very different markets. It? I mean, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, you're talking five million square feet. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Wait a second, but don't about. I have uh, Hudson Yards? Don't I have other properties? No, no. I have a, a variety of space. I'm not even talking about the outer boroughs. I'm talking about this Hudson Yards. There's Gary Barnett's property. There's Boston properties on 55th Street. There's some buildings coming uh, on yeah. bound. Okay, you know, there's Entirely speaking to other decades, our construction has been, you know, de minimis. No, I'm not, I mean, Mark, I'm so, not disagreeing. But So in terms of new buildings, that's really not putting a pressure on the market in Midtown. I, I'm not worried. And downtown, it's, you know, they've been, they've been really good in terms of what's happening downtown. And Silverstein, I think, and the, and the Port Authority have done a good job in not building number what is it, two and, yeah, which and number one. number three, you know, building just that one tower and then doing the platform and waiting for a tenant for the next for the next building to go up. So, you know, when you look at that, there's only about two million feet that they have to lease the balance of one World Trade Center and then number four. And then you've got so who's gonna the, the, the World Financial. So who's going to take the Condé Nast space in Midtown that the Port Authority is taking right now 
I mean, you That's have. That's going to be a 2015 situation. But you, isn't that a large amount of space? Condé yes, it Nest? is. You have a Condé Nest yeah, space over there it that's is. going to it become is. available. You know, it's. It, but if the economy picks up, I mean, if we're in the doldrums for another three, four years, let's, we should have that discussion about how nervous we are. But if you have, I mean, I think I'm hearing, and I know I feel somewhat positive about the outlook of New York and the outlook of really America, right? The United States is not. You know, the oceans aren't rising up. It, it's, it's a good place to do business. Okay. And you, so you know, we're going to get out of this. He, here's and employment of, here's will Here's the up. problem that sometimes I have with the show, which I'm finding on. New York is five boroughs. And, you know, the real estate board, when they do their residential report, they only even talk about four boroughs. They don't even talk about Staten Island. You know, I, I look at the Redney report. <laughs> but there are other boroughs. Now, I believe that Brooklyn is doing better because the, there hasn't been any new space built in Brooklyn for at least 10 or 15 years, so it's fine. Queens, with the exception of the building that was built, you know, Gotham Center, which, which was basically built for the government services, there isn't over there. How do you, uh, and, uh, and I think- Court Square I, traded at a big number. Court Square, because it was a lease. Oh, How do, right. uh, and both of you are handle the, the tri-state region. How are the rest of the markets? How's New Jersey and how's Westchester doing? Well, I'll do Westchester and Fairfield. Bridgewater's just signed for 750,000 square feet to build a building up in Stamford. And now they're in Westport, it's, but it's, it's a lot more space than they have now. We were just fortunate enough to close a deal for 875,000 feet for PSE&G in New Jersey. Renewal, renewal, renewal. Well, 50% of the market's renewal. It's a lease and it's a commitment and it's gonna be good for Newark. So uh, I think New Jersey is a little bit slow. Uh, I don't think uh, that it's recovered really from any of the preceding three recessions. And so there are issues and problems out there. Uh, you're not finding any movement out of New York at the present time into central New Jersey or any of the, those areas, except for maybe a data center. And you, Mark? Mark? No, I, I happen to agree with you. I mean, the vacancy there is what, hovering in the 20% yeah. range both there and in, and in Westchester. Yeah, but he, he brings up more. an interesting point, and I think it's something that Gino will bring up also. A lot of the space that's been leased in New Jersey, especially Newark, you know, with Panasonic and with Prudential, is due to urban tax credits. Uh, the accounting firm of Eisner Amper is moving into Woodbridge, which is their market over there, and it's, it's tax credits. It's over there. We don't have tax credits that we're offering to people today. Um, we always win and lose tenants, you know, we're always in that situation. Um, it's two, 2015. We hope the economy is fine. We have space at Lower Manhattan on B and C build, uh, buildings over here. Who's going to take that space and do we need tax credits to uh, get that? Do we have to go back to 421Gs, you know? A lot of the growth has come from technology companies, and they're not going into the World Financial Center for the most part. They're going to go into the B building. I don't know about the Yeah, but they, but they like, as we said, Midtown South before. Technology being priced out of Midtown South. Out. Yeah. Those That'll tenants are coming over. north and going south. Exactly That'll spill right. over. It, do, I mean, it's the question, I, do I wish that New York City had a coordinated effort to attract tenants that the way New Jersey does? Yes. Yes. Would that be good for the market? Yes. I mean... They should do it. I don't know if that's. I mean, local let's be realistic. Level. Starwood last year. Be nice. Starwood moved out of Westchester and they moved to Connecticut. The incentives were enormous. I mean, they, that's what they 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 bought. But we should do it. But New York has a very healthy market, comparatively speaking, so they don't really have to mm. reach for these tenants. And I think Mayor Bloomberg has sort of proven that out over the last mm. several years. He's not offering huge packages to people to stay. Now, what about the, you know, there, the, we've had some good investment sales this year, but it's slowed down, I'd say, in the second quarter and right now for office buildings. You, I mean, M&T is an active player, a very active player. I know you financed uh, the, the property that Kaufman and um, Invesco bought a couple years ago on Fifth Avenue, which is really doing well, and you've done some other. Almost 100%. Okay. How are you looking at, as a lender today, when people are buying buildings? Well, we're looking at it really two ways. We're going, the going in sort of debt yield um, and then what, whatever their plan is for lease up. And then five years from now or seven years from now, what the debt yield is going to look like uh, prospectively so that we can account for a rise in interest rates and, and, and any sort of sensitivity in, 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 in asking rent or, or effective rent. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're, you know, we want to go in, you know, we, we'll go in as low as six or seven if there's a plan to get up and there's some vacancy. 
Um, but we want to get out at 10 and a half or 11 or higher because you've got to account for a rise in rates over that period of time. And who knows what happens to the rents exactly? I mean, I suspect but, they're going to be higher. But we, but but we, we have, have a, up. But we have an artificial situation. We have interest rates at, at such low rates exactly. today. Uh, these rates are, you know, I mean, we've never had, I remember I did a show a couple of months ago and I asked Philip Eisenberg about rates in the residential. He said, I never saw it. I said, and he said his, his father, who was in the business in the 40s, never saw, uh, probably never saw rates this low. <laughs> you underwrite okay? to a 10, if you underwrite to a, a, a 10 debt yield, that, that equates to basically a 7% rate plus 30 year AM. So, could it be higher than seven percent five years from now? Could be, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I still remember and, and Mike Fasten, coverage. I remember Mike Fasatelli being on the show, and he said, "You know, I knew when we should stop buying buildings in the property when when a young analyst came into my office and David Greenbaum, and he said, in three years our rents are going to be at two hundred and twenty five dollars." <laughs> he says, "I know that the world has changed." I mean, and let's remember we were talking a couple years ago. 2007, hey, whatever number you want, buildings, it's better if the building's vacant, everything like exactly. that. You know? That's what got us into trouble. That's, that's, that's exactly that's a, I mean, come on, anybody who thinks a vacant building's better than a, a no, no, old building a shouldn't be in real estate. <laughs> 2007, <laughs> a lot of people Winston, did. Uh, they, unfortunately, <laughs> in 2007, yeah. there were a variety of situations. Zachary always says, it's not beautiful unless it's rented. So that's, <laughs> that's why you're that, still in business. That, that, that's why <laughs> that's you're in business. That's the fundamental. Yeah. Now, but what, what are you seeing uh, with regard to the new, the new people who are buying buildings, the funds or certain other people? Are they astute enough to be in this market over here today? My perspective is if they're willing to put in 45% equity and, and, and they've got a plan that makes sense and they've got some experience, they've got, they're astute enough. I mean, we're willing to take that risk at 55 or 60%. Um, and I think a lot of these guys have been through, they, they, they went through the last cycle. So they, they saw that there's mistakes that were made. They're not performing rents at, you know, 10 and 15 and 20 percent year increases and, and ongoing forever. Uh, so I would say for the most part, yes. And you obviously you've always got to pick your borrowers. So he, here's an interesting question. You know, I think 2012 should be the year of, you know, it's, it's like in baseball. You know, it's trading. You know, people move to different locations, you know, different teams. It, it looks like the baseball teams of the brokerage business. You know, the world has changed over here. You know, we, from Canada, we have Avison and Young. From California, we have Lee and Associates. I mean, all these new firms, you know. And new uh, franchises. All new franchises, right. okay, yeah, bonus babies. Uh, how do you see the, uh, the brokerage business, which is changing quite a bit? Well, I take it as an indicator that the market might be a little bit slow in so far as I get calls from brokers all the time. But I'm in the broker business, so I like getting those calls. There's, a, there's the perception is, is, that is, there's is, more is, movement is, than there is really there, is. Is there room, okay? You know, people would say they used to be the A, B, you know, they were the top three firms, uh, you know, the, the, the top international national firms. Now there are a number of other places, you know, there's the, the Grub Newmark, uh, Newmark Grub Knight Frank. You know, your change over there, the Cassidy Turley, the Colliers International is a different change. The Lee and Associates, the Avison and all the rest, and maybe there'll be Cres Crespa Partners and all these Crespa Cressa. Partners. Right. Do you see more of these? Do you see more new brokerage firms? The barrier to entry is pretty high here, but I think what is happening is that some of the larger firms have gotten too large. That's my impression. And, uh, you know, we're the beneficiary of that. We're both with uh, an opportunity kind of for the boutique mid firms in New York connected to large entities. It's a great strategy for us. Exactly. So. How, how, you as a banker, how do you look at it? I, I, you know, as, as a banker with regard to fi being in the banking business to lend to brokerage firms or other things? We, we don't. They're not typically big borrowers, I mean, at all. So we don't, we don't do that. And as, as an owner, how do you look at you know, with regard to the new brokerage firms? I mean, we're happy to work with anybody to the extent. That bring I mean, me a tenant. Yeah, bring I'll me a work tenant. With you. <laughs> it's, it's exactly right. I mean, we're, you know, we have obviously, uh, our policies don't change. We're going to, you know, pay, pay quickly, pay promptly, pay fair to the broker who brings us that's a That's why you've been in business for uh, 100 years. I mean, that's that's not the question. That's why I brought no, you. Yeah, how do we like? We don't, we don't discriminate. We're, no, no, well, it's the same group of brokers you dealt with before. They just have carrying different Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we know them. They're our friends. It's, it's Now, we, we spoke about, you know, Midtown. We've spoken about, slightly about downtown. Is Midtown South really that strong these days? Uh, yes. 
the strongest market in the country. And what do you, you know, I remember, <laughs> I remember when Paul Paris was on my show when I went from radio to TV. It was one of my first shows in 2003. And we were talking about 111 8th Avenue. And when he went to the New York State Teachers Retirement to invest, they said, are we crazy? We're going to invest in this crappy Sylvan Lawrence property over there at 111? I mean, look, what's Google. made what's made Midtown South different today? Joe? The, it's just the character of the buildings, the neighborhoods. They're cool places. People want to be there. I think the young people are driving a lot of this in, in the city. People really want to be in Midtown South. People want to work where they live. And when you think of new media and technology and all the employment that's happening in that arena and the youth factor, they're all downtown. They're all in you know, I, I don't Chelsea. Want, they're all in Atlanta. They're all, you what's driving I mean, it is exactly that. It's new media. It's yes. New York City has, and I give Bloomberg a lot of credit, has done a great job of making New York City a, a place for social media tech, that it's a real incubator city today. Everybody, we're the second largest recipient of VC capital outside of uh, Silicon Valley. Silicon Alley is strong. So why is it young? The buildings are cool. They're hip. They've got character. They can live, work. Great. And the restaurants hotels. are cool. They're yeah, right, I mean, they're right down the street. There's a vibe. Yes. People want to live here. The young people want to move here and want to live here. And that's what we got to maintain. Yeah. There's I, a great I, vibe. I, I don't want to wear my pessimist hat, but since I'm known as that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. 2000, I still remember I was doing some consulting in March of 2001 uh, for Deloitte and & Touche, and I was working with all these young techies, and then all of a sudden, one day, we laid them off. The world changed. You know, the, look, Zanga's not doing that well today. You know, Facebook is not, is doing well, but there are a lot of these companies. You know, maybe this tech revolution and all the rest changes. Could be a bit of a bubble. Could be. That's what I'm. Mean, the tech is here to stay. I, I mean, uh, Winston, I agree. That, tech is here to stay. But you know what? Apps aren't going anywhere, right? I mean, there. Or who knows? I mean, God knows. No. Something will change in five years. But the point is, it's here. It's a viable industry. There's winners, losers, high valuations. But it's not Pets.com at right. it's not IPO. five billion dollars. Right. It's not IPO driven. It, it's driven by. For the most part, smart venture capitalists that are seeding these companies. Yeah, you don't see, you haven't seen a lot of offerings so far, and yeah. and so they're continuing to do it. I think a lot of these guys are, are making money, and some some of these guys are making money. So it's it's the, the diversity of our economy. I mean, New York has, and there's other things like we don't talk about. You know, what's the biggest driver? Healthcare. Healthcare. I was just going to say that, that it, it was coming out of it right. was coming out of my and we're a college is, town. College, exactly. My gosh, Education. look at us. We're a no, university look, look, city. I mean, yeah. if you if you look at the amount of space. That and I'm going to write an article. Verizon sells all the space. NYU buys all, most of the space, and it's becoming healthcare. And look what's going to happen in Roosevelt Island. And We're calling it the EdMed complex. There's no question. <laughs> it's diverse. Wait, when we start the twelfth season, I know that I'll have all of you back, and I want to thank you today for being here. I'd like to thank Gino Martucci, Mark Boisi, Joe Harbert, and Winston Fisher. See you next week.